Okay, now why did I actually break this out again? Oh yeah, Streets of New Capin is coming out. Let's talk about Elspeth. So, <clears throat> there's a new Elspeth coming out. And as you can see, I happen to be a fan of Elspeth myself. And back in the day, when people were still building Oathbreaker decks, I decided to build an uh, Elspeth Oathbreaker deck. That was token based. And so this is going to be a double feature. We're going to talk about Elspeth and we're going to talk about this commander or this Oathbreaker deck. So now I have one of each of the copies of Elspeth that go through her life, and these tell a story. From her time on Alara to going to fight against the Phyrexians, going to Theros and absolutely destroying the Magic the Gathering competitive scene, and after she died, coming back as a much as a very subpar version of herself because people were still scared of this one <clears throat> and I feel like I'm forgetting a very important part of this story hmm oh yeah this came in the mail today which is why we're doing this this fits in right between these two and even though it is the same as the original printing this was our hint that she would be coming back this came out, this is part of the Guilds of Ravnica Mythic Edition. If I recall, the print run was 10,000 for this particular Mythic Edition, this particular card. And when I bought this, you could get one for under $80. Now you're looking at over 90 and this is from TCG Player, looking at light play near mint only. I believe there are 12 copies for sale because whenever Elspeth comes back around, the old copies end up getting bought. <clears throat> and that's why you can't get this Elspeth for $7 anymore. You can't get this one for 5 anymore. It's because people absolutely adore Elspeth. Gideon is gone. Long live Elspeth. And I believe I shall be putting this as my Oathbreaker again. Well, this is going to replace my old copy from, I believe this is dual deck Elspeth versus Tezzeret. Now, are the copies of Elspeth good to spec on? I believe that if you can find any promos, alternate art, Masterpiece Edition foils. They are obviously worth picking up if you're going to play with them because while they will oscillate up and down, <clears throat> none of these will ever go to like 50 cents because it is Elspeth. Not financial advice, just my opinion. Now, <clears throat> we've gotten that out of the way. This is the one that I think would actually be worth specking in for long term. It was a big thing. If you weren't there when Guilds of Ravnica Mythic Edition landed, because several million players came because of War of the Spark, which was after this came out, so they didn't even get a chance. I don't believe that this art, and especially not this foiling, is ever going to come back for this card. This is one in 10,000, and I think it will stay that way. 
And with only 12 left, time might just be ticking down until they're gone. I don't think these will ever be thousand dollar cards. But if you told me that in five, ten years, this Elspeth turned into a $250, $300 card, I would not be surprised in the slightest. Now, let's talk about this deck. In case Oathbreak, your group plays Oathbreaker, or it ever comes back into vogue. Because who doesn't like playing with their planeswalkers? So, we have Authority of the Consoles. Creatures enter the battlefield tapped. And whenever a creature is a battlefield under your opponent's control, you gain a life. Great hate against those aggro decks, because while we are a pretty fast deck, we're a small deck. And we want to make sure that our opponents cannot place in those big blockers to stop us. We also have Kithian, Hero of Akros, just because why not have a one-mana Planeswalker? Don't even have to show you the back. Who cares? It's a one-mana Planeswalker. Fits in with the deck. Make him invincible. Swing in. And it, at worst, it's a Savannah Lions which was a broken card for a long time. Swords to Plowshares is a self-evident card. Ajani's Welcome is a gem that I think is often overlooked. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. This little piece of tech was very, very good back in its day, especially if you had a way to pump out tokens, which we'll be getting to in a minute with one of the gems of this deck people have forgotten about this card i don't i do not know how or why this is literally soul warden but sticky soul warden problem with that card is that all you gotta do is just accidentally bump it and it dies this they have to have specific hate to get rid of Doomed Traveler, we are a token deck. We don't mind losing any of our creatures, and this comes back as another token. Soul Warden, because as I said before, Soul Warden is a very good card. <clears throat> Even if the creature version is a lot more fragile. Path to Exile, often. We'll actually use this on our own tokens as a form of ramp. That's just how things go. Um, we have Intangible Virtue. All these tokens that we're going to be making get plus one, plus one. Smuggler's Copter helps us sort through this deck because it is singleton, and that crew one is great because we are making a ton of tokens. Daxus, Blessed by the Sun, is another Soul Warden that can just be a giant butt for us. And for all those ladies out there, I know I know you love your muscle-bound men with that big old booty. <clears throat> now, Birth of Miletus helps us smooth our draws. It gets us, uh, pulls a planes out so that we don't have to uh, draw into yet another planes because this deck needs mana. But we also don't have a ton of draw engine, ton of draw engines, so it really sucks to top deck a planes later on in the game. <clears throat> so, gather the townsfolk, makes a token, declaration in stone. This can do a lot of things. We, if we're at a place where we're about to wipe the board then we can just Declaration and Stone our board, and we actually have card draw. Just wipe the board of, we have 10 tokens, Declaration and Stone, and then follow it up <clears throat> with a Day of Judgment. Oops, sorry, spoiler. And, yeah, that is actually, like, that can't ask for better card draw in white. On the flip side, if our opponents 
have a big wall of tokens in our way to actually stop us. Wipe the board of their tokens. And, uh, yeah, just swinging for the win. Who cares about card draw if you're going to win that turn? <clears throat> Benelish Marshall, yet another anthem. Gideon of the Trials, you got to kill our Gideon before you can kill us. And 4-4 four, four, Indestructible is always nice, especially one that's able to dodge board wipes. <clears throat> History of Benalia, make a couple tokens, buff them up. Very nice card. I think it is an underrated gem from Dominaria. People have started to overlook it since Dominaria is so is gotten old now, but you know, whatever. As we make tokens, Mentor of the Meek. Make all of our tokens one mana draw card. We actually do get a little bit of card draw, which is impressive because this is white from back in the day. Hall of Triumph. Choose a color. Creatures get plus, creatures that color gets plus one plus one. This is an extremely powerful card, especially in our mono white deck, making a bunch of mono white tokens. We are anthemming. We're going to play a ton of anthems so that we have a lot of power on the board. Entreat the Angels, hit it for the miracle cost, and we can win the game next turn. Also, from the Vault Angels, not a ton of those. I believe, what is it, 15,000 was the print run for those? So. If you can find those singles, pick them up while you can. One day, that boss is going to turn to zero. Thalia Heretic Cathar, a personal favorite of mine. First strike, creatures and non-basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. One-sided hate. Three mana, three, two, first strike is also nothing to scoff at. That can be a big wall while we're trying to set up all of our token strategies. Leonin War Leader attacks, create two, one, one. White cat creature tokens. Short, sweet, and people are finally giving it the love that it deserves. <clears throat> Heliod God and Sun. Four mana, indestructible enchantment. It'll occasionally be a creature, but it has to have at least five devotion. But for four mana, get a 2 1 white cleric enchantment creature token. And our creatures have Vigilance. Both very good effects in this deck. Archangel of Tides, more hate. When it's untapped, you cannot be attacked unless they pay one. So we keep this untapped until we are ready to swing in for the win. And then they cannot block unless they pay one. When we attack with 20 creatures, it's not often our opponents have 20 mana. Hero of Bladehold. Battle Cry, give everything plus one plus zero. And makes two one one white creature tokens, which basically makes them two ones if you know how to stack your triggers. Very, very good card. Day of Judgment. This is the the um, player rewards promo. Full art. Very cool card. Force of Virtue. We can exile a card, and we get another board wipe. Or not board. We get another um, anthem for zero mana. Very, very powerful card in this deck. Settle the Wreckage. <clears throat> we can use this to ramp if we really feel like it. And we can use this as a de defensive move if that's what we feel like doing. Now for one of our masterpieces, Oketra the True. Double Strike Indestructible and can't attack unless you control at least three other creatures. We are going to make a ton of tokens that will attack a lot. And we can always just... Declaration in stone or su uh, settle the wreckage if anything looks fishy and we want to put that thing back off the board as just an enchantment. And for four mana, you create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token with vigilance. It feeds into itself. It's a very good card. Sarah. Our goddess Sarah. Makes 4-4 four, four flyers, buffs flying creatures, and... As long as you control a creature, damage that would reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. What the hell? In a deck like this, we can always ensure we have a creature. We can never lose once she ultimates. <clears throat> if we know what we're doing, of course. Destroy target, tapped creature. <clears throat> Hmm. 
we can make everything attack Gideon if we need to buy a turn. And once again, 6-6, six, six, indestructible. Wait, is, it, is this one indestructible? Yeah, it's indestructible. <clears throat> Just old wording indestructible. It's always nice to swing in with something after you board white. Vanquisher's Banner. Um, coat of Arms, sort of? Not really. It's a bad Coat of Arms. Choose a creature type. Creatures of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. But when you cast a creature of that type, draw a card. Very, very powerful effect for tribal synergy. <clears throat> and we're playing a lot of soldiers, knights. So, Angel of Invention makes two one ones. Flying Vigilance Life Link. We can make it a four three instead if we need the extra power. But another anthem. We, as you can see, all we have to do is build up one or two tokens, and this deck just goes to town. Pay four mana, make a five five. I'm fine with that. <clears throat> Destroy all creatures. You gain one life for each creature destroyed this way. Just in case we need that little bit of extra life gain. I don't know how, but we're going to be gaining a ton of, ton of life. Terminus. If we get the miracle cost, we can bounce everything. Just nice, clean answer if we're ever falling behind. And we can build back because we have tokens. Now this is the Judge promo, Phyrexian Elish Norn. Opponent's creatures get minus two, minus two. Our creatures get plus two, plus two. Yet another anthem. Yet another amazing card. And while this one has crashed recently, the uniqueness and the rarity of this, I believe, will make this... This, I feel, has to be the bottom. And before too long, I'm assuming we're going to be going back up on these this old Judge promo, specifically. <clears throat> For lands, as you can see here, we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 basic planes. And for our spells, or for our uh, utility lands, we have Caracas. Taps for white, bounces a legendary creature. This is Oathbreaker. You're going to have a lot of legendary creatures. Mistress Factory. Dodges board wipes, becomes a 2-2, two -two, gets uh, bonuses from all the anthems, swing in for tons of damage, because why not? Maze of Ith, just uh, in case there's something that gets sprung on us. And Keldoran Outpost, reserve list, amazing card. Back in the day, you could get this for $5. Those days are long since gone. <clears throat> From Alliances, Alliances is hot, Alliances is good. It's a very powerful card. I mean, being able to, for two mana plus this, so three mana in total, make a 1-1 one, one token over and over again for the rest of the game. And it can still tap for planes. Very good card. And a uh, little bit of tech. Tap your planes, then sack it for the outpost. So, that just leaves us with our Planeswalker spell. I went with a beautiful foil, Worm's Chant. Oh, God, I love these foils. Now, for one, they just simply cannot play spells this turn. But for one plus the kicker, so two mana, creatures can't attack you this turn. So... If we get to turn three and we think we can start really going off on turn four <clears throat> at the beginning of their upkeep, Orem's Chant, possibly pay the kicker. Let him pass back to us and just, just go off. Excellent card. And just like, just like our Planeswalkers, it's going to cost two more for every time that we use it. So, first time, one mana with a kicker, two mana, four mana, six mana, no, one mana, three mana, plus one or two, three or four, five or six, <clears throat> and 
even at five mana, just being able to make it to our opponents miss out on a turn, very powerful effect. Well, <clears throat> that has been our Elspeth Knight Errant Oathbreaker deck. A brief history of Elspeth cards in this deck, which I believe are underrated and should be looked at more seriously. And I am Rukak. This has been JM Day Warehouse. Peace out. Don't forget to like and subscribe.